So now that we have our table create statements put together, let's add some data integrity constraints. And we've already added some. So um, these not nulls and uniques and primary keys are all integrity constraints. Um, but we're going to add some foreign key constraints for all of the um, primary key foreign key relationships and um, at least a couple of examples of check constraints, or at least one anyway. Um, but before we do that, while I was editing the previous video, I noticed a couple of things that I want to change. So the first thing that I want to change is in the rating table, I forgot to add a column for upvote. And I think the best way to do this particular um, column is to have a value of either minus one or plus one. And then I can just sum up the ratings for a particular posting in order to come up with an aggregate score. Um, so let's go ahead and add upvote to MG rating. And that's going to be numeric one comma zero and this is going to be not null because if there is um, uh, no rating for a particular post there's going to be no rating record and the other thing i want to change is up here in the uh, mg user table i'm st storing a password hash um, but I also need a salt, and I'm going to make that the same size as the password hash. And a salt is just a uh, um, random sequence of bytes that you concatenate with the password before hashing it. And it's perfectly safe to store the salt in the table as plain text because without being able to reverse this password hash, um, having the salt by itself isn't going to help you. So that's going to be a char 64 as well. And uh, then when the user gives us our password, we can add the salt to that, hash it, and then compare the hash value to the password hash in the table to authenticate the user. So that should be enough for the create tables. Now let's go ahead and add our foreign key constraints. So basically everywhere in the data model where we have one of these FKs, um, the uh, column that the FK is next to is going to be a foreign key that references a primary key or some other column in um, one of the other tables. So let's start with profile and the user ID column in the profile table is dependent on the user ID in MG user. And so we're going to add a foreign key constraint here by saying foreign key references. And then we give the name of the table that the primary key lives in. And then open paren and the foreign key column that it references. So that's going to be user ID. And this foreign key syntax with the parentheses that lets you represent a uh, reference composite keys in the other table as well. So the problem here is actually that the MG user table does not exist when we go to create this reference. And so we need to reorder these statements a bit. I'm going to move that after this. So that MG user gets created before the foreign key reference. Now, sometimes you'll have a column in one table that references a column in another table. And then this table has a column that references the first table. So basically, you can't put one before the other because of the foreign key relationships. When you run into a situation like that, you can define the foreign key constraint separately from the table create. So I can create the first table, create the second table, 
And then in a separate statement, after both tables are created, then I can create the foreign key constraint as a separate SQL command. But we don't need to do that here, at least not yet. So no foreign keys in the user table. There is a foreign key in discussion, which references user ID and user again. So this FK owner ID in discussion has to match user ID and user. So here's the owner ID and we're going to add foreign key references mg user user ID. And then the next one we have is parent ID references um, post ID and post. Discussion ID references discussion ID in discussion. And user ID references user ID in user. So let's go ahead and add all of those. Um, I'm, I think, well, let's, let's see if I get a problem here or not. Um, so parent ID is going to be referencing post ID and post. So I may have to define that separately, but I'm not entirely sure. So let's see. Foreign key references mg post post ID. And it's not giving me any kind of syntax warning or anything, so that's probably okay. And then discussion ID foreign key references mg discussion. discussion ID and user ID is foreign key references mg user user ID. So that should be all of the foreign keys for the post table. And then for rating user ID References mg user, user ID, and fk post ID, foreign key references, mg post, post ID. So that should be all the foreign keys. Let's go ahead and put a go in here as well. And I'm going to execute this whole thing and see if I get any errors. And all the commands completed successfully, so that's good. Um, let's go ahead and refresh and look at our tables. And then we'll look at MG discussion columns. So you'll notice there's this, um, you know, gray key for the primary key. And there's also this silver house key looking thing next to the foreign key. Um, in previous versions of SQL Server Management Studio, this used to be a gold key for the primary key and a silver key for the foreign key. Um, now it's a skeleton key and a house key. I, I don't know. I'm confused by these symbols. But, uh, but anyways, you can tell that this is a foreign key because of the shape of the key. And then let's go ahead and look at rating. So here, it just shows as a primary key, but if you look at the, the description, it says foreign key as well as primary key. So that looks correct. And uh, we'll go ahead and look at post because that had a lot of keys in it. So post ID is the primary key, parent ID, discussion ID, and user ID are all foreign keys. And we'll see the effect of that later on when we get to insert. Um, now, the other thing I want to add is a check constraint. So let's go ahead and on my rating, I want to make sure that the only values that get into this upvote column are plus one and minus one. So it's one character wide, um, but I want to make sure that, um, that it's nothing other than minus one or plus one. So I'm going to add a check constraint. So we'll go ahead and say comma check. 
And then I give a Boolean expression um, that returns either a true or false value based on whatever I want it to be based on, including these columns. So in this case, I'm going to say upvote equals minus one or upvote equals one. So anytime I create a new row, it's going to check the upvote column against those values. And this whole thing has to be inside of parentheses. There. So one expression with parentheses around it. Um, so if this returns true, if I've um, inserted a row that has a minus one or a plus one, this expression is true. And so the check constraint passes. That works for update as well. If I try to update the value of upvote in this row, like user switches from an upvote to a downvote, um, it's going to recheck that constraint. If the if this returns true, that passes. If it returns false, I'm going to get an error. And this whole transaction, everything between the two goes, is basically going to get aborted and uh, execution stops at that point. So let's go ahead and execute this again. Oh, and uh, could not drop object MZ user because it's referenced by a foreign key constraint. So this is one of the things that happens as well when you add foreign key constraints is if you look at the MG user table, it's being referenced by several other tables. So MG user has user ID and then MG profile references MG user ID which means that if I try to delete MG user, this thing is going to be dangling. So there's no way I can have a foreign key in MG profile that references user ID and MG user if MG user doesn't exist anymore. So this is, it's imposing a data integrity constraint on me and not letting me break that constraint by deleting MG user while MG profile and mg discussion and mg post and mg rating all rely on that field. So there's two ways of fixing this to make this drop actually work. The first way of fixing it is I can actually name this constraint, actually name this constraint, this foreign key constraint. I can create it with a name so that it's easy to refer to it later on and I can delete that constraint, drop the constraint first before I try to drop the table. And I had, would have to do that with all the other foreign key constraints as well. Um, in this case though, all I have to do is reorder these drop statements so that I don't try to drop the MG user table until after I've dropped the other tables that have the foreign key constraints. So since all of these have foreign key constraints on user ID, I'm going to put this last. And then after I've dropped these tables, the foreign key constraints go away. And so then it becomes OK to drop the user table. Now, I also have to do that for all the other constraints as well. So let's look at what we have. So I have to delete profile before user because of that F key. I have to delete um, discussion before user. I have to delete post before um, user and before discussion and um, actually, yeah, just before user and discussion. Oops, let me unshow that again. Yeah, so let me make sure that's actually happening. So post needs to be before discussion like so. And then rating needs to be before user and before post. So let's move that before post. Okay, so this should be the correct order. Nothing is referring on profile or rating, so it's safe to delete those first. And then after I get rid of the foreign key constraint on post ID, the only other thing that's referring to post ID is this parent ID, but it's in the same table. So I can get rid of post next. 
then I can get rid of discussion because I've gotten rid of the foreign key constraint on discussion ID from post. That clears the last foreign key constraint on user ID, so it's okay to get rid of user. So you'll notice this is actually pretty picky. It only works in this order. Um, if you run into a circular reference problem where one table has a foreign key on another table and vice versa, just as we saw before, what I need to do is um, make that constraint as a separate statement that has a name and then explicitly drop that constraint before trying to drop the table. So let me execute that. And everything completed successfully. If I go ahead and reload and look at my tables, Oh, those were views. I actually want tables. And let's go ahead and look at my rating, which has the check constraint. So here's the columns. And if I look under constraints, there's the check constraint. And so for all of these constraints that you create, if you don't give them explicit names, it goes ahead and it auto generates a name based on the name of the table and the name of the column and uh, just a random hex value. So I could use this to delete the constraint directly, but this is going to be a different value every time I recreate the database. Now, if I wanted to, another good thing to put in a check constraint would be to make sure that this email address is in a valid form. And there are various patterns you can get that will help you um, verify this. Um, but I'm not going to bother. I think that's enough for, for this video.